minus 10. Landing a man on the moon. Minus 10. Landing a man uh, on the moon. Eight. Returning in the safety to the earth. Made Captain into the start. Right away, here, sir. Minus 10. Landing a man uh, on the moon. Eight. Returning in the safety to the earth. Made Captain into the start. Right away, here, sir.
minus 10. Landing a man on the moon. Eight. Seven. Six. Made in from start. Right away, Houston. Minus 10. Landing a man on the moon. Eight. And returning in the Made in the start. Right away, Houston. Well, Galileo really had a surprise this time. Uh, we uh, flew by Io, and uh, we were expecting to fly by one volcanic plume uh, from the volcano Chvasta that we knew about from a previous orbit. Instead, uh, we flew by another plume that uh, we didn't know about. Uh, this is a plume from a new volcano. Well, this new volcano is really exciting. Uh, first, uh, we didn't know about it. But most importantly, it uh, spewed out this plume 300 miles high. And this is the tallest plume that we have ever seen on Io. So this is really exciting. Io is the most volcanically active world we know of. And uh, Io has about over 100 active volcanoes, um, dozens of which were discovered by Galileo. And the reason it's so volcanic is because of its peculiar orbit. Io is caught between Jupiter and uh, all the big moons of Jupiter that are further out. And so it's like in a tug of war between Jupiter's gravity and the gravity of the other moons. And the tidal stresses uh, caused by the gravity of Jupiter and the other moons uh, is what causes Io's interior to heat up and allow it to have so many active volcanoes. We can learn a lot about Earth's volcanoes from Io. Io is erupting now very hot lava of the type that we haven't had on Earth uh, for uh, billions of years. And these are called ultramafic lavas, very peculiar, primitive type of lava. Uh, so by observing the eruptions on Io, we can find out how these lavas erupted on Earth in the distant past. Minus 10. Landing a man uh, on the moon. Eight. Returning in the Made in the start. Right away, Houston. In this particular flyby of Jupiter's moon Io by the Galileo spacecraft, a big surprise was the detection of these giant clumps of molecules of sulfur dioxide uh, coming out of the spray that was uh, being ejected from the mouth of the volcano. We'd never seen anything like that before. Well, we think that these are fresh from the volcano because normally what would happen would be giant particles, the kind that we measured, would very quickly break down in the atmosphere of Jupiter. Um, ultraviolet light would have a tendency to break them apart, and also the very energetic particles in, the, in Jupiter's magnetosphere would also break them apart fairly quickly. So we must have gotten them just before that.
what are the particles? Um, well, we might say we might call them crystals of sulfur dioxide, and we might call them snowflakes. Um, it's it's hard to know uh, when we have frozen ice that uh, molecules of water that are in clumps like this. They have a tendency to make either uh, snowflakes or in larger particles, maybe even hailstones. So we don't have. It doesn't appear that we were hit by something that was he as heavy as a hailstone. So perhaps a snowflake might be a, a, a better apt description of what we actually measured. Some of the things we'd like to know about the, what is actually happening inside the volcano itself is we'd like to know, you know what is the real temperature down there and what are the, the components of the, the lava? Is it, is it sulfur? What kind of sulfur is it? Um, and how does the, how does the, what's the first thing that comes out? How is the, how is the lava being driven out of the volcano? And by being actually able to measure what actually came out of the mouth of the volcano, that will help us in establishing some of those, uh, going one step further towards answering some of those questions. <laughs>